Hello, I'm Laura Marshall. And I'm Melinda Rose, and this is Light Matters for October 30th, 2013. On today's show, light and ultrasound aim to replace mammography. I share some insights from my recent trip to Photonics in the UK, and NASA's laser communications project sets a transmission record. A new device called a photoacoustic mammoscope combines infrared light and ultrasound to create 3D maps of the breast. Its creators hope that it could someday replace the x-rays used in traditional mammography for routine screenings of breast cancer, one of the most common types of cancer. The new imaging tool developed at the University of Twente might one day help detect the cancer early when it is most treatable. In the new technique, infrared light is delivered in ultra-fast pulses to tissue where it is scattered and absorbed. The high absorption of blood increases the temperature of blood vessels slightly, causing them to undergo a rapid but slight expansion. While imperceptible to the patient, this expansion generates detectable ultrasound waves that form a 3D map of the breast vasculature. Since cancer tumors have more blood vessels than the surrounding tissue, they are distinguishable. Currently, the new technique's image resolution is not as fine as that obtained with existing techniques, but it's hoped that that will change in future versions. Plans also include adding the capability to use different wavelengths of light at once, which is expected to improve detectability. A small clinical trial last year showed that an earlier version could successfully image breast cancer in women. But before it can be used routinely, the device first has to prove it's at least as effective as mammography, MRI, and ultrasound already widely in use. A clinical prototype is in development and should be ready for testing next year. The device is described in Biomedical Optics Express. The UK photonics industry needs to make connections with the markets it enables and take advantage of the opportunities available today. That was the takeaway from a roundtable press conference I attended during Photonics 2013 in Coventry, England. A major connection to be made is to the fields covered by the catapult centers named by the UK's Technology Strategy Board. The catapults focus on innovation in seven specific areas, including manufacturing, renewable energy, the digital economy, and future cities, with the goal of driving future economic growth. Each of the seven areas is clearly enabled by, and therefore an opportunity for, photonics. So are top UK employment areas such as optical systems, medical, production, defense, space, the life sciences, and sensing. Those are the markets on which the photonics community has to focus, the group agreed. Cooperation and collaboration between and among industry, academia, and government are vital, they added. The industry needs to follow the lead of its customers and fulfill their needs, but also anticipate those needs. John Lincoln of the UK Photonics Leadership Group cited the example of Apple and Google and other wildly successful companies. If you think about all of those, those are people who broke the rules and didn't say, this is my focus group with my set of customers. Steve Jobs is famous for saying, my customers don't know what they need. I'm going to deliver what I think they need. That's, and he built a vast empire on that basic principle. So it, some of this is, is how do you grow modest, stable, good companies, or how do you break the mold and create brand new things that nobody's imagined? And those are two different things. Uh, and it's certainly true that by fostering a, a strong academic sector, you are more likely to get those new Google moments. But you also have to create this balance between saying, show me your customers, and how many investors are absolutely insistent you show customers, and as, as they were well known, and this is truly radical. This is breaking the mold, right? Um, and then you can't show anybody the customers. Photonics itself was an intimate look at the UK segment of the industry, featuring a huge range of technical lectures. I heard talks on microscopy and lasers for bio applications, advanced machine vision technologies, hyperspectral imaging, and new application areas for lasers. I even saw a presentation on a robot that can frost a cake. There also was a funding session where companies could get advice on navigating the UK's funding landscape. And the exhibition was a great place to meet up with companies from the UK and around the world. So I want to hear more about this cake frosting robot. Like, why would you want a robot to frost a cake for you? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of about um, precision and volume. You know, if, if you have a robot doing something, you can have a person doing something else in the factory. So do you think uh, Hostess or Little Debbie's doesn't have <laughs> robots <laughs> frosting their cake? I'm not sure. This was more about specialty frosting. Um, so with messages, happy birthday, Dave, that kind of thing. Oh, interesting. Maybe you can program the uh, 
the text in there, so the no no more typos on frosting exactly. cakes. Exactly, <laughs> and you can probably spell check it too. Absolutely, sounds good. In the early morning hours of October 18th, NASA's Lunar Laser Communication Demonstration, or LLCD, made history by transmitting data from lunar orbit to Earth via a pulse laser beam at a rate of 622 megabits per second. That download rate is more than six times faster than previous state-of-the-art radio systems flown to the moon. LLCD also demonstrated an error-free data upload rate of 20 megabits per second transmitted from a primary ground station in New Mexico to the spacecraft currently orbiting the moon. NASA officials say they are encouraged by the results so far and are confident they are on the right path to introduce this new capability into operational service soon. LLCD launched last month aboard NASA's Lunar Atmosphere and Dust Environment Explorer, or LADEE, a 100-day robotic mission orbiting the moon to gather detailed information about its atmosphere, conditions near the surface, and environmental influences on lunar dust. The short LLCD mission is a precursor to NASA's long-duration demonstration, the Laser Communications Relay Demonstration, which is scheduled to launch in 2017. That's cool. We uh, reported on that about a month ago, and uh, apparently it worked. It worked. <laughs> well, we received an email recently from a regular listener to Light Matters. You mean viewer, right? No, actually, he listens to Light Matters as a podcast on iTunes on his way to work, where he's an infrared physicist. He likes the show, but he had a request, and it's actually something we've been working on for the past few weeks, and that is slowing down. Yeah, I did read that email, and what he said was, please slow down whilst you rattle off all those technical terms and acronyms. Virtually all practicing optical experts are specialists, and that means we are all something of hacks outside our narrow specialty. Those are his words, not mine. As a result, he continued, we cannot quickly understand the jargon of even closely related optical research. I've got to admit he's not the first person to say this, and any of you who watch us regularly know that I personally have a tendency to speak very fast. Not me, not so much. <laughs> but we appreciate the feedback and we are working on it. If you didn't realize the show is available on iTunes, it is both video and audio versions. And it would be really helpful to us if you would leave a short review. That helps the show get discovered. Yeah, the same is true if you watch on YouTube. And of course, you can email us with your comments or questions at lightmatters at photonics.com. Thanks for watching or listening, and we'll see you next week. Yeah.